Hi guys, what's up? This is Haru Brouwer from Paragliding Chat. In this podcast, I ask as many paraglider manufacturers as possible questions about the characteristics of their brand and what they aim to achieve with their various models. In this episode, I'll have a chat with Icaro and V Paragliders. My name is Wolfgang Kaiser from the Icaro Paragliding from Germany, Bavaria. And I am the boss. My name is Vera Kaiser. I'm uh, the woman of Wolfgang Kaiser. And uh, I'm the financial manager in the company and doing all things which have to be done. Hello, my name is Colleen Popa. I am a um, test pilot and researcher in the team of Icaro Paragliders from Bavaria. Since when does your brand exist? 2000. 2000. Beginning Icaro Paraglides, yes. Okay. What kind of wings do you produce? We have the standard gliders, uh, ENA and B and plus, plus and we work uh, special gliders for acro and freestyle. Which target group do you have in mind when developing your wings? We are targeting the average pilot from the beginner level to the experience level. And as well with our special gliders, we are targeting the beginner up to the advanced and expert in aerobatics as well. What is your philosophy when it comes to making paragliders? Paragliding is nature. We are doing a very cool sport in nature. We have fun, we have freedom and that also the thinking and the designing of our gliders because every paraglider, the design of every paraglider of us is a part of our Icaro Edelweiss. And the Edelweiss is a very, very um, seldom flower high in the mountains and uh, yeah this feeling of freedom nature uh, happiness emotion we want to give in our products to our customers uh, paragliding is a, a sport for uh, say uh, time on the uh, weekend and uh, is a good feeling uh, on the sky is free Next question, how do you classify wings within a certain class? And please give an example. Um, within a certain class, we can classify wings according to different parameters. Like for example, classification low B or high B, which is going to tell more about the performance of the glider while still keeping the same class of safety. On the other hand, we can also differentiate gliders within the same classes to the purpose. Like for example, we can have two EMB wings and one is cross-country oriented, so it's good for flying long distances, and the other one is um, freestyle oriented, so it's very maneuverable and you have a lot of fun with it. So this is another method of classification of wings. And also, within the same class, we can also classify gliders by the weight and intended purpose. Like, for example, hike and fly gliders and so on. Some time ago, we talked about an A and B and C glider. But now, the uh, different classes are different, split it. Yeah? And uh, a low B is the perfect glider for a student who had his R glider, who has uh, some uh, experience, he's flying his E and A glider for one year or so, and then he changed to low E and B. The other side, high E and B, is for cross-country pilots, where the maximum of safety is important because he doesn't want to fly a C or a D glider because it's too dangerous for him. Maybe he doesn't have the experience of pilots who are flying this glider, but he wants to have the mostly possible performance to fly his cross-country flights and so on. But as you say, it's very different gliders in one class. Do you also take winching into account? Um, it depends uh, on, the, on the class that we are um, designing for. But yes, we usually take winching into account as for the loads on the paraglider are a little bit different when we are uh, winching up instead of foot launching. 
We have all gliders certification for the mountains and for wings and for uh, paramotor. Uh, different, not all models, yes. What do you see as an important future development? I see a very important future development, a more objective comparison system between paragliders and between uh, different steps of development. That is uh, a more rigorous system of documenting a performance, of documenting improvements, and a more objective classification of the gliders according to their purpose within the class. I think that the average pilot should be provided more objective information about the intended use of that paraglider before they buy it so that they can choose the product that suits them best. So, in my personal opinion, more scientific data about paragliders and more detailed explanation on the equipment is necessary so that people get to fly the wings that are suited for them safer. Any further improvements that we may expect from your company? Yes, uh, in the next uh, improve, uh, we uh, make a new ENB glider, yes. And we work on this. We have a new software in the company. Uh, we make this uh, new uh, work with uh, development uh, together, a new team. I think we have uh, in the future very nice and safety and emotion gliders. Yes. Last question already. How do you deal with complaints? It's very important for us. We are very happy that we don't have many of them. But every complaint we take very, very um, important for us to see the mistake, if there is a mistake, to learn from it and to handle it uh, perfect always for the customer. And uh, yeah, if we have to learn something because something happened and everywhere can happen something, uh, we will uh, make it sure that that will not be in the future. Regarding our equipment, um, well, they are standard as all our gliders are tested with the EN certification. So the materials, the aerodynamic characteristics and the behavior in flight is already over certified by the official authorities. Um, over our own internal testing, and we are doing a lot of it, to make sure that the gliders are safe, not only when they are new, but also when they age. So, Thank you very much. You're, You're welcome. welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. Ciao, ciao. That was my chat with Icaro, and now straight to Fee Paragliders. So hi there, my name is Hannes Papisch. So I'm the CEO, owner and uh, developer from Fee the Papish GmbH. So we are more or less only development part. We have no sales uh, department. Since when does your brand exist? 2017. And what kind of wings do you produce? Yeah, we do paragliders, but we, we had have already established a big range of, I think now, 75 wings all over the classes. Paragliders. That's only special. paragliders. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's start. Which target group do you have in mind when developing your wings? Yeah, nearly all. So I say a paraglider is like a shoe. So it needs a lot of different shoes as well as it needs a lot of different paragliders because everyone has his taste, his personal taste and his demands. And so it needs a high variation of types. So that's the reason why we have that many types of paragliders. And of course, in the accordance to shoes, it needs a lot of sizes. So I think sooner or later we will have every square meter a size of paragliders. Same as shoes. Imagine you have shoes and only uh, every so steps for two. So it's 40, 42, 44. It wouldn't be enough. So sooner or later we will we will see more sizes. Yeah. So we have uh, four or five different A-class gliders. We have the Fantasia, the Sola, the Viola, the Sonata, and uh, the Symphony as all A-class wings. Because we think A-class is more or less enough for everyone. And maybe just because of status, we 
choose to have a B class wing. And then we have, again, we have uh, the tenor, uh, the beat, and the maestro with light versions, so six different paragliders in the B class. A lot of different types of wings for different types of pilots. What is your philosophy when it comes to making paragliders? Yeah, the main goal is uh, more safety with more performance, so to improve the safety performance uh, relation. Yeah, traditionally, uh, members, also we come from a very hard testing uh, tradition. So some of our test pilots are known to be very hard testers. Test us so test pilots so we have uh, we are testing in the Aachen area where, where you can do everything you can fly in strong thermals lee thermals and you have the lake where you can do your maneuvers over water so uh, we are the testing itself the maneuver testing has a high value for us and finally it's proven that with our wings there we have not really a safety problems in practice so it's paying off to be very strict in this uh, issue How do you classify wings within a certain class? And you, you told me already you have a lot of uh, E and A yeah. gliders, for example. Yeah. So what is the difference between all of them? So it's lots of different shoes for lots of different uh, acti ac activities and same on paragliding. So we have, of course, the very low level wings, which are very, very easy for the beginners or the not so talented pilots and yeah they should even stay with these wings and have fun for the rest of their flying career and so for we try to have small steps yeah because that the people uh, it's easy to make one step after after the, after the next so that they have when they are used to one glider and they think they can they need the next step that the next step is reasonably small and it's not too big and uh, I always tell we have no problem that too less people begin paragliding. We have the problem that too much people are leaving the sport because they feel unsafe. So we should rather uh, motivate them to stay with the lower classes and to find their right wing with the maximum of, of, of safety. Yeah? Do you also take winching into account? Yeah, here, of course, in the, in the mountains, not as much, but it's not uh, so far and you are winching. So the schools are winching on the, even on the edge of the, of the Alps. And of course, not only winching, also paramotoring. So I, for myself, I'm a passionate paramotor pilot. And, but we cannot do it here, it's forbidden, but we go to Italy or to Germany. And yeah, there are similar uh, demands on the behavior of a paraglider if you use it on the winch or on the paramotor. So we once, as I have been over, I've been over for 25 years, we invented this um, winching accelerating system, you may remember, where it's uh, been, uh, uh, pushing the speed bar automatically when there is pull on the winch. But uh, at the nowadays gliders, it's more or less not needed because they are better in high angle of attack situations and be behaving better than the uh, wings of the early days. Yeah. What do you see as an important future development? I think the general direction of development is good. So we are all of the brands, all of the scene, that all the developers together, they managed to make, the para, make paragliding safer and with more and more reasonable performance steps. I think direction is good. We just have to follow the ways. Of course, the lightweight wing trend is a nice one as this was the origin of the sport so hike and fly more or less is the origin of the sport and we are coming back to this origin and that's a good trend and it will we will follow that way yeah, it's good any further improvements that we may expect from your company yeah we are a special situation because i have been with a traditional company for that long time 25 years and then i was three years uh, helping a swiss company And now we are just more or less a startup and we managed to double ourselves in between one year from the very first one to the second one and we're still draw growing very, very fast. So as I was telling at the beginning, so to fulfill the very first promise of paragliding to the people, to, to offer very easy and safe flying for everyone. So paragliding can never be too easy. So we should further develop to make paragliding flying even more easy. I think it's uh, more or less the right for everyone that it's, it should be as easy as driving a bicycle. Yeah. Last question. How do you deal with complaints? 
yeah, complaints, it matters on because of what. So we always have or material problems are as old as the sport. So you have some complaints because of some suing not really good or, or, or some classes, some single class roles not really good. That, that's that's more or less normal. It's not, uh, you cannot avoid it even if you check very, very careful before you manufacture. And of course, we have uh, the base attitude to be very, goodwill so we are changing it against new parts and so on and yeah, that, that's also part of our reputation a part of that we have a, a one year full guarantee that means when you buy a new wing and you get it damaged also complete destroyed in between the first year of usage you get a new one a new wing and we repair everything for free so we did it also with my old company and we continue doing so with the new one the stupidest case last year was a uh, um, a grass cutting robot. So the guy was laying out the wing on the landing place or, and was talking with somebody and the grass cutting robot was running through the glider and we, we, we replaced it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes, thank you also. In the next paragliding chat you will hear other manufacturers, so stay tuned. Don't forget to subscribe to Paragliding Chat, then the next episode will automatically appear in your favorite podcast app. Till next time and safe landings, bye!